It's Meet the Writers on BarnesandNoble.com. I'm Steve Bertrand. Some writers are egg layers and others are egg polishers. Meg Cabot is here to tell us that she's an egg layer and will explain the difference, right? We will. Welcome. So what's the difference between an egg layer and an egg polisher? Well, an egg layer is somebody who just lays the egg and moves on to mm -hmm. lay the next egg. An egg polisher is somebody who lays the egg and then sticks around and polishes it and admires their egg over and over again and doesn't really get around to laying the next egg. Every paragraph, every phrase. And... Well, you know, I, I think that I, I do polish my paragraphs, but I do I do tend to then move on to lay the next egg I, very quickly. <laughs> you also said once that the idea of spending more than a month on a book is oh torture. <laughs> it's true. I do. I do. Well, I, I think that was a bit of an exaggeration. I do don't. I, I do don't. I actually don't spend more than a couple months on, on a, book. a book. Yeah. I, I think about the idea for the book for quite a while before I write it. But once the book is written after that month or two months, mm -hmm. are there revisions after that? The polish comes or no, it's done? I read over what I've written um, the next day. I, I read over what I wrote the day before. Mm -hmm. And um, then I write some more. And then the next day I read over what I wrote the day before. And that's really how the revision process goes. Before I turn it in, I'll read the whole thing. Usually once. But an editor looks at it. Oh, absolutely. And you take Not editing. only an editor, but I have a couple of friends who I force to read everything. Do you take editing day. well? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> I hate I hate the revision you process. You do. I hate it so much, but I need it. I do. And and I understand that. And so I take my, my whipping. So <laughs> a, a, a lot of women, I think more than men, maybe it's changing, keep diaries through school. And then they look back at their diaries and they're sort of mortified by what they see. You, on the other hand, have turned it into a career. I leave out a lot of stuff yeah. from my diaries. I would never show it to anyone. But there's a lot that I've put into my books, but there's a lot I leave out. Is there a lot that you've gone through and redacted from your diaries? There's a lot that have met with the shredder. There, at really, my truly. House. Oh, gosh, because I don't want to die and have somebody read that stuff. It's horrible, especially my, my mother. What's the most embarrassing thing you shredded? I'm not going to tell you. If I shredded it, there's a reason why I shredded it. It's awful. A lot of stuff about how I hate certain people and I never want those people to find out that I said that because I, I don't hate them that, that's the thing about a diary it's just something you're feeling at that moment right and um, you know you don't you don't really mean that but I still don't want them to know that I ever said that so Meg Cabot comma the princess diaries right is that the way it follows you um it seems to and I, I don't think that's really a bad thing you're okay with that great yeah but now comes Allie Finkel yes Allie Finkel's rules for girls which is written for younger girls. It is. You must sit down a bit differently when you write for younger girls. Well, I think about how a seven-year-old would talk, mm -hmm. um, which is different than how a 14-year-old would talk, which is different than how a 30-year-old would speak. Who is Maggot Cabbage? <laughs> That's me. That was my nickname. Oh, my gosh. How did you find out about that? That was what they called me in the fourth grade. It was horrible. And you've overcome it. But Allie Sorry. Finkel has nicknames, too. Allie Stinkle. Yeah. It's horrible. You know, I want to know mine? What? not going to tell you. No. It was worse. Oh, I can't imagine. Yeah, so nothing's worse than maggot cabbage. Bird turd. Oh, oh that's pretty bad. Yeah, you can oh, use that. Sorry. But I, I'm interested in this idea of a new kid coming to school yeah. because I was thinking of this when you wrote about it. My, I have a son who's in the fifth grade. Mm -hmm. He's got a buddy he calls newbie Nick. <laughs> and so I think once you move into a school, you're always the new kid. I, I said, Noah, how long has newbie Nick been your friend? He goes, oh, about three years. I mean, the kid's been there. And he there. can't be the new kid anymore. Absolutely not. No. But it sort of stays with people forever. Well, until another new kid comes. There's a new kid in Allie's life. And, and Best Friends and Drama Queens, which is a new book coming out, um, a new kid comes to Allie's school, a new girl. Mm -hmm. And Allie's very excited because she's not going to be the new girl anymore. But And she thinks, well, she's going to get to show this girl around. And no, that's not what happens at Cheyenne. all. Cheyenne. Cheyenne is this horrible, horrible girl. And Allie Finkel's future, how many books does she have in her future? Um, she's got at least three more after Dra uh, Best right. Friends and Drama Queens. Is it easy for you to come up with her stories? It is because I remember fourth grade and how horrible. It really was a horrible year for me. I think of it. 1976. It was a horrible <laughs> it was a, year. It was the bicentennial, but not for Right. Me. And it, we painted our fire hydrants in town. Did you do that? Absolutely. Yeah, red, yeah, white, but and it blue. didn't make any difference. It's I didn't win horrible. that contest either. No. Uh, do you miss your characters when they're gone? Do you miss Mia from The Princess Bride? Um, the Princess Diaries, I do miss her. However, she's keeping a blog, MiaThermopolis.com. Um, so we get to visit her a little bit. I mean, she's grown up and she's she's moving on. She's off in college now. So you live in Florida now. I do. You're kind of a quirky girl, aren't you? I, you know, I, ha I can't drive. I'm a terrible driver. So you can't I ride drive or you don't drive? I don't have a license. Let's put it that way. Right. No, the man's keeping me down. He won't give me a license. <laughs> so I ride a bike everywhere. I've got a couple cats and I, I ride I write books. Talk to me about writing, because you write now on a laptop, I'm told, mm -hmm. since September 11th. In bed, yes. Explain that. 
I just I had trouble working at a desk after that. My desk um, was um, at the in front of a window, and I lived in a high rise building, and that just didn't work out for me. My husband worked on Wall Street and um, was there that day. He actually worked across the street from the Wall mm-hmm. Trade Center, so that was um, a bad day for everybody. But um, since then, I retired to my bed, and I've enjoyed it ever since. But you were you could see his could you see his yeah. building? Yeah, well, I could see the World Trade Center um, from my building, and see, I saw the smoke, and that was, was you know it was a bad absolutely. Time. But um, you know, since then, we've both progressed a lot. And... A tough time, but it's I've talked to a lot of writers who said I didn't know if I would write again after that. You say you had a book deal, and you sat down and you kept writing. I wrote. A book in 10 days after that happened. I don't know why. <laughs> it was the only book I've ever turned in that needed no editing whatsoever. My, I gave it to my editor, and she was like, this book is perfect. And, and I don't know why that happened. State of mind at the time? I was or? so focused on that book, and I just didn't want to think about anything else. It was totally into that book. It was um, Nicola and the Viscount. It was a Regency romance, and so it had nothing to do with anything that was going on. So you sort of life. buried yourself in the book. It was amazing. It was a great, great, fun way to stay out of reality. Do you think you could ever not write? No. I've been writing since I was seven years old. I wrote my first book, Benny the Puppy, about a, a young orphaned puppy. And I've never stopped writing. And writing it was always my hobby. And it was something that I just did for fun. I was a really nerdy, geeky kid. And that was what I did. Other kids played tennis um, or went skateboarding, and I wrote books in my spare time. And now it's my job. But when I have time off from my job, I write books for fun, which is why I have so many books that I've written. Because when I'm on vacation, I still write books for fun. And drives my husband crazy. But it's what I do. I love it. And so I just can't imagine ever doing anything else because that's what I love. Well, Meg, we look forward to the next one. Thank you. Meg Cabot. You're watching Meet the Writers on BarnesandNoble.com. I'm Steve Bertrand.